What's up YouTube, this is iTweaks here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys the best hidden features in iOS 7 that you should know about. Now, I'm going to be going through these pretty quick because there's a whole lot of them, so I want to get them done as quickly as possible. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first one that I want to show you is how to change your text size. So you can see here, if I tap on notes, that text is actually pretty large. And if I go into the settings here, and let's go back to general, and then we'll go into text size, and then you can actually drag the slider right here. Now it's only gonna work in apps that support dynamic type, which is most of the stock apps. So if we go back to the notes, you can see that that text just got smaller. All right, so next I'm gonna show you guys how to block calls and messages from a particular number. So if we go into the settings here and we scroll down, you can do this in three places. It's gonna be in phone, messages, and FaceTime. So if we tap on phone, you can see here, here's blocked, and then you can add new. Then you can either choose a contact or you can type in the number right there, and then you can add it. So let's go back here. You can do that in messages as well. So if we scroll down here, here's blocked, and you can do the exact same thing. And FaceTime, if we scroll down, here's blocked. So you can do that in the three separate places, phone, messages, and FaceTime. You can also do it within the applications. Next, we have a better do not disturb in iOS 7. So if we go into settings, we tap on do not disturb, we scroll down here, you can see that you have these two new options because in iOS 6, you actually still were quote unquote disturbed when you were actually using your phone. So if you're using your phone, you got a notification, then it was fine to disturb you with that notification. Now, you can actually turn the silence on at all times. So even when you're on the phone while you're watching a movie, playing a video game, or writing an important email, then you will not be disturbed no matter what. Now you can go back to this option if you want to, like it was in iOS 6, but if you don't want to be disturbed at all for a period of time, then you can just tap always right there. So the next thing I want to talk about is frequent location. So if you haven't noticed in your notification center, it will tell you exactly what the weather conditions are, your traffic conditions for your commute even. And the way that it knows that you're going to work every morning is due to a setting called frequent locations. Now this is enabled by default, but you can turn it off. If you go down here to uh, privacy, location services, scroll down here to system services, and then you have a frequent location toggle right there. So if you wanna tap on that to turn it off, that way it doesn't know your frequent locations, you can even clear the history if you wanna do that. But you can turn it off right here. Next, you have dynamic wallpaper. So if we go back here to the main settings page, and let's tap on wallpapers and brightness, tap on the wallpaper, you can see that there's two separate types of wallpapers here. There's the stills and the dynamic. So if we tap on one of these, you can actually choose a color. They're all exactly the same. They're just different colors. And you can tap on one. See if I can tap on that. There we go. And you'll see that you'll get a dynamic wallpaper. So it's going to be moving in the background on your springboard and on your lock screen. So let's just cancel that. Next, you have your parallax effect. So if I move this up here, let's see if I can actually get a good shot of this. It's kind of hard to see on camera. But you can see you can actually see behind the applications there with the parallax effect. So it's kind of like the icons are floating. Now if you want to turn that off, you can do that just by going into settings here. Let's go back to the main settings page. We'll go into general accessibility and there is your reduce motion. So you can turn that on or off depending on if you want it on or off. So if you turn this on, then you're not going to have that parallax effect. If you leave it off, then you're going to have it. Siri has also been improved, so if you want to turn off settings using Siri, you can do that. So let's do that right now. Turn off Bluetooth. Okay, I turned off Bluetooth. So you can do that with multiple different things. You can use it for basically all of your toggles. So you could use it for airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, do not disturb, orientation lock. And Siri has gotten a ton of different uh, commands that you can ask her. And she's really a whole lot more helpful than she was in iOS 6. Also in iOS 7, you actually have a new feature that does background updates. So when you're connected to your power and you're at a Wi-Fi location, let's say you're at home, then it's going to learn that and it's going to start updating your applications during that period of time. So a way to turn that on or off, if you go into the settings here, let's go back to the main page. And we're going to scroll down to iTunes and App Store right here. 
And if it let me scroll down, there we go. You can see here is the toggle. So if you turn it on or off right there, if it's on, then it's going to automatically do uh, new updates whenever it needs to. Now you can turn that off just by hitting that toggle right there. Just like that. Another cool thing about iOS 7 is it actually has this new background app refresh. So if you're multitasking a lot, then it's going to actually keep those pages updated and it's going to refresh them in the background so when you go to access them, they'll actually already be with the most current information. Now you can turn this on or off in the settings by going to settings and then we're going to scroll up to general and background app refresh right there. So you can tap on it right there, turn that on or off. Let's do that again. Looks like it crashed when I did that. There we go. And background app refresh will actually learn when you visit websites and it will update those for that time accordingly. Also, iOS 7 has come in with a bunch of new gestures. So if you wanted to go back a page, let's say we went to my email here and we tapped on an email and if we wanted to go back a page you can actually swipe just like that now you can do that in multiple applications you can do that in mail notes settings and messages etc to go back one screen now here's some more gestures if we go back to the home screen and we swipe down just from the top half of the springboard you can see that you get the spotlight interface now if we open up safari here and let's make a new page and we go to iphone hacks now, let's say we wanted to actually go to one of these links. If you wanted to, you can swipe back just like that, and you can swipe forward in Safari like that. Now, if we go back to the tab view right here, you can actually close tabs just like that. Also on the lock screen, if we go here, you don't have to, oops, you don't have to swipe down here at the bottom anymore. You can swipe anywhere on the screen just like that. Also in the Photos app, if you go into the Photos app, let's go back to Albums, or let's go to Photos down here, and go to Years. Now if you tap and hold, you can actually see a preview of the picture if you tap and hold just like that. Now if you leave a finger over it and then you let go, it's going to open that picture up in the Moments category. Next if we open up the Camera application, you can see here, if you want to take a picture of the Bad Boys 2 DVD, you can do that by just tapping the shutter button. You also have this square mode, panorama, video over here, as well as slow-mo. And you can actually add real-time filters on the photo and square photo right here just by tapping this. And you can see all the different nine live filters. It gives you a preview of what it looks like. And then you can tap on one, and it'll leave that filter on there and allow you to take a picture of it. So if you aren't aware of the new camera feature on iOS 7 for the iPhone 5S, you can see here if you tap and hold on the photo button, it's going to continuously take photos extremely fast. So you can see that number going up there right there. Now if I switch over to a previous device like the iPhone 5, give me just a second. Alright, so now I'm on my iPhone 5 and you can see it's not going to be taking pictures quite as fast as the iPhone 5S, but it will do continuous shooting. So if I tap and hold here, you can see down in the bottom left hand corner as those pictures actually save into my camera roll. Now obviously you guys know about the control center here and this is accessible on the lock screen as well as the notification center is. Now we can turn that off if we go into settings here and we tap on either one of these. You can see access on the lock screen if you want to turn that off. You can turn those off right there and we go back here go to control center and you can turn that off right there as well. That way people aren't accessing your control center or your notification center without your permission from your lock device. Folders also got a huge improvement and you can actually add multiple applications into one folder. Now I say multiple, but you can actually add unlimited applications into one folder. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just start adding some stuff here into this folder and you'll see that you're able to put in all that you want. You can see that it changed pages right there. and you can just keep adding them just like that. We'll get to where it switches the page one more time. All right, so see, you can see there. Now, if we get out of wiggle mode, tap on this, you can see if you swipe over like that, then you have 
all your applications. Now you can continue to add those as much as you want. You can have unlimited amount of apps in that folder. Also, when you bring up your app switcher here, all you have to do to close an application is swipe up. You can do that with two fingers or you can do it with three. So let's do that just like that. Now, if you use Siri a lot, you're going to notice that actually Bing is integrated into Siri. But if we wanted to, let's go ahead and close that right now. But if you wanted to actually use Google for a search engine on Siri, then what you would do is hold right here. Search Google. When can I buy the new iPhone 5S? Searching Google for when can I buy the new iPhone 5S. So I didn't really need to know that answer, but... <laughs> I just, that was the first thing that came to mind. But you can see here that it obviously opened up Google and it used Safari to do that. All you have to do is preface your search with Google search and then whatever your question is. If we jump back into Safari here, you also have an unlimited amount of tabs that you can open. There's no more limit on the amount of tabs that you can have as you can see here. I'll just continue opening blank tabs and it's never going to stop. And then let's see, you can see all those open tabs. Now you can continue open those all you want. Also in Safari, if you tap on a page here and you wanted to access links from Twitter that have been shared with you, then you can see here just by going to this at symbol right here, here are all the links that have been tweeted directly to you from the people that you follow. Now one thing in iOS 6 that you couldn't do is hide your your newsstand unless you did it in a, a glitchy way which there actually was some ways to hide your newsstand but in iOS 7 it's no longer a folder type icon so you can actually hide this in a folder so let's go ahead and put it in this folder over here that I have right there that can be accessed just by doing that iOS 7 also has granular cellular data tracking so basically what this means is it allows you to see exactly how much data that uh, app is using. So if we jump into the settings here and we tap on cellular, you can see right here if you scroll down, here is the use of cellular data for every specific app that you have. So you can see here mail is using 6.4 kilobytes, notes 20 kilobytes, so you can see all that stuff. And you can also disable the app from using data just by hitting one of those toggles. Next, if we go into our compass here, and you see there's actually another page down here. So you can see if you swipe over, here's actually a bubble level. So if you move the device around, you can see that it actually tells you whether or not the surface that you want is flat or not. So you can see right there, I'm not particularly flat, but pretty close. Also, if you give it one tap, you'll see that it turns red and if you put it on its complete backside, you can see that it actually gives you a different view that looks more like an airplane's horizon gauge. You also have the clock right here displaying the actual current time with that second hand moving, so that's a pretty neat feature. And if you swipe up on the control center, you can actually tap on this. It's no longer an app that you have to download, you can just tap on that and it's going to give you a flashlight. Also notifications that you've seen on your Mac will no longer show up on your iPhone and vice versa thanks to the iCloud based notification sync feature. Also now in the mail application if we go in here and we tap edit you're actually able to select all just by tapping mark all. Now that is a new feature so you can flag it or mark as red just like that. And there's actually a new feature in iOS called Activation Lock that makes Find My iPhone feature more foolproof. Now, I'll put a link in the description below for you guys to check out a full review of that because it's actually a little bit in-depth and I want to give you guys all the information that you need in order to use that. So, check in the description below and I'll give you a link to that. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you want to see more of my videos, then go ahead and subscribe. Also, don't forget to like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter for updates. And if you haven't checked out my gaming channel, go over there and stop by and say hey. Alright guys, until next time, peace.